here, here's a good uh, example of, of, of using S parameters. We're going to use S parameters to derive the um, the relationship between the input reflection coefficient and the load reflection coefficient. Because think about it, the input reflection coefficient is the the relationship between the uh, backward traveling wave on the input side over the uh, you know the forward traveling wave on on the on the input side. If you have a forward traveling wave on the input here, some of it is going to reflect back. Okay, so that would be the uh, maybe intuitively we might think of that as the S1 one parameter, but some of it is going to make its way through, and then some of it is going to be reflected back um, when it meets the you know the output matching network here, depending on on gamma L how good that how good it's matched, and then some of that energy is going to make its way back again and uh, you know appear on the uh, as part of the backwards traveling wave on, on the input here. So this is the uh, you know the behavior that we're trying to capture in this expression. If all of the energy that was transmitted through the amplifier stage was being transmitted through the output stage, and you know all of that energy was being transferred uh, into the load, and none of it made its way back to the input, then obviously the uh, the input reflection coefficient would just be th that S11 parameter. But that's not the case, right? Um, we know that there's mismatch mismatch here at the at the output matching network, and some of that energy makes it makes its way back, right? So. Um, the expression is a little bit more complicated than than just this, um, but if if there's a good match on the output, if the uh, S12 parameter, which describes the, um, you know the, the transfer of energy from the output to the input, if that's very small, uh, that's where we kind of make the approximation that the input reflection coefficient is just this S11 parameter. But let's be more explicit here. Let's derive the uh, you know the analytical formula and see what that looks like. We want to come up with an expression for the backwards traveling wave on the input here. And some of that backwards traveling wave is going to be the input wave times S11, okay? That's the that's the amount of the input wave that gets reflected right at the input. But then there's also this other parameter which takes into account, uh, you know, waves traveling back and forth and bouncing around and, you know, eventually making their way back to the output side of this, of this two-port network. So what is that guy? That's what we're going to try to find out. So on the output side, let me just draw the amplifier a bit bigger, and then we have an output matching network. The forward traveling wave on the output side is going to be composed of the amount of the input traveling wave that gets transmitted through, so that's V1 plus times uh, the S21 parameter. But if you take it a step further, you know that there's going to be some mismatch that occurs here at the output matching network. Some of that energy is going to travel back towards the output side of the amplifier, but then that energy is also going to be uh, some of that energy is going to be reflected off of the output side of the um, of the amplifier as well. Okay, so that little bit there is going to be the backwards traveling wave times S22, which is like like I said, the output reflection coefficient is is sort of equal to the uh, S22 parameter. Okay, so the sum of these two terms is going to be this forward traveling wave. Okay, so hopefully you can see that we have this guy moving from left to right, and then we have this guy moving from left to right. So let me just clean things up a bit. So next, the backwards traveling wave here on the output side is going to be uh, the amount of energy that gets reflected off of this output matching network here. Okay, if we assume that the output matching network has this uh, reflection coefficient gamma L that you see up here, then um, it's clear that the backwards traveling wave on the output side is going to be equal to the uh, forward traveling wave times the uh, reflection coefficient. Okay, So we can combine these guys and we can solve for an expression for the output forward traveling wave in terms of the S21 and S22 parameter and the reflection coefficient. Alright, so recall we're looking for uh, the expression for the uh, backwards traveling wave on the input side of the amplifier here. We know that there's going to be a term related to uh, the amount of, of the input signal that gets reflected back right off the input to the amplifier, but there's also going to be um, a certain amount of uh, backwards transmission between the backwards traveling wave from the output side through the transistor. Okay, so these two terms would sum together, and then that would be the total 
uh, backwards traveling wave on the input side. So down here we have the expression for phi, which is the backwards traveling wage wave from the output side, multiplied by uh, the S12 parameter, which is kind of the, the backwards, the backward gain. So the equations that we found for the uh, waves on the output side of, of the matching network, we can plug in those expressions uh, in here, and we end up with phi equaling uh, this term that you see here. So we can combine it all together, and we end up with uh, this expression here for the backwards traveling wave on the on the input side. So if we plug this expression back into uh, what we have here for the input reflection coefficient, uh, we see that some of these terms cancel, and then we end up with the final uh, expression for the input reflection coefficient. Okay, so so what this shows us is that the input reflection coefficient is a function of the load reflection coefficient. In order to calculate the S11 parameter, you need to match the output side here. So if that's perfectly matched to 50 ohms, then our output reflection coefficient, or sorry, our, our load reflection coefficient is going to be zero. We see that if the load reflection coefficient is zero, then this term here goes to zero, um, which gives us the, you know, the case where the input reflection coefficient equals uh, S11. Um, so that's kind of where that relationship comes from between the input reflection coefficient and S11. Um, another thing, uh, you know, in, in a system that's like matched reasonably well, um, the reflection coefficient is going to be you know, it's, it's going to be small, right? Um, if you do a good job, it, it can be really small, but it's definitely going to be small. Um, S21 is also a small value. So overall, this, this term here, um, you know, is approximately zero, and that's where the, the approximation comes from between, uh, you know, the input reflection coefficient and S11. Okay, so this is kind of the main concept here, that the input reflection coefficient depends on, on you know, how the load is matched.